Hi, this is Ted. Uh, you know, for several years, a couple years, I was really into magic. I just wanted to know everything about magic. Uh, I'm not sure why. I think I really wanted just to know how it was done. Uh, you know, I didn't plan on becoming a magician. I had no interest in becoming a magician. I just wanted to understand what's going on, and especially with card tricks. And what I found out that there are different types of card tricks, but basically there are those that are just pure skill, and that's what I wanted to know most of all. And so I, in order to get to know how to do them, I'd go down to the magic shop. This is long before the internet. So I'd go down to the magic shop, and the magic shop doesn't tell you how it's gonna be done. The guy behind the counter is going to sell you a book. And so I asked which book is the best, and he said, this is the one the real magicians use. And it is the most thorough, the best book at that time on magic tricks, card magic tricks. So I bought that and started learning how to hold the decks, how to control cards. And I was able to control cards up to about two or three into the deck as uh, and if you know anything about magic i think you'll understand what i'm saying basically you keep it in a certain spot either behind uh, on the very bottom or on the top uh, or else two or three away from the bottom or the top so you really learn or else you learn how to put your finger in certain places to hold a, a hold a, a space uh, so you know where the top is going to be even though it's in the middle of the deck but it's still uh, marked you, you just know where it is all right and I but I was able to read more about those who are really skilled in how they can uh, shuffle a deck so they know where every single card is throughout the whole deck and that just that would take thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of hours of practice to get that done as well as the skills you're seeing with a lot of card magicians uh, that you'll see on TV, especially with something like America's Got Talent. However, there's another form, and this one, I go into the shop, and I was there several times, not a lot, but several times, and one of the card tricks really was not gonna be found in my book. And so I talked to, the guy said, I want to know how to do that trick. And he gave me a deck of cards. He sold me a deck of cards. You don't find out how it's done until you buy the deck of cards. So I buy the deck of cards and find out. All right, here's the trick. If you thumb through, you can see that the entire deck has different cards. But then you thumb through again and they're all the same card. And there's all kinds of tricks you can do with this deck. Every other card is the same card. It depends upon which side of the deck you're flipping. All right, so what, if you will see somebody using this type of trick, you will see them turn the deck around in their hand. That's all they're doing. It's nothing special. It's no talent. It's no skill. You turn the deck around. The talent and skill comes into the way, the drama that you are going to provide. You might, you know, some will say there are spirits here and you know, they go into that whole spiritual aspect. You'll have other people who will talk about, oh, who knows what. You, you just have different uh, ways that you can try. You might make humor out of everything. Uh, whatever it is you just you have some kind of drama that's involved as well and there's also something that you can do to help make sure nobody sees what you're doing because if the only thing you do is turn that deck of cards around you are gonna get a couple of people who are pretty smart believe me a lot of people still don't get it okay they still won't get it but in order to help people, you add stuff. You add little things you do and stuff that have no meaning whatsoever. But people are looking, what is he going to do? How is he going to do it? And with those additions, it just confuses them all the more. All right. What does this have to do with faith healing? 
Faith healing is kind of like that. Now, before I move on into the faith healing, I do want to talk about one more thing about magic, which is fascinating. Before I understood the trick, it was all very mysterious. Once I understand tricks, the mystery is gone. And that's one thing. Magicians love audience participation. They love to trick people because what they're doing, they know what they're doing. It's no longer mystery to them. And there are people out there who don't want to know how tricks are done because they love the mystery. And in your audience, you will have people who will see what they believe are miracles for faith healing. And they want to live in that existence. They don't want to know there's trickery going on up there. And it's not that they purposely don't want to know, but they have already decided this is what's going on. Miracles are happening. All right, what is a real miracle? A real miracle goes beyond nature, beyond what we know in the realm of nature. Now, if I don't know a lot about a trick, it's mysterious. It could be miraculous. And if I tell people that the spirits are helping me, th there will be people believing that. Even though it's all make-believe, none of the spirits are helping me do mind reading or anything like that. It's all mechanical. It's all stuff you can reproduce at any time if you know how to do it and if you're really good and have practiced many hours at doing whatever particular trick it is. Ditto for faith healing. As long as the audience does not know. And believe me, there are even faith healers, I believe a lot of them don't realize that they're messing around with stuff that is quite natural. Not a miracle at all. But they believe it is because stuff is happening that they can't explain. And as soon as you get into that realm where I can't explain something, it automatically jumps into the miraculous realm. When in fact, if I can't explain, you've taken away the miraculous. And some people just don't want me to do that. All right. When I see faith healers, they're getting away with a lot of stuff. The most simple, basic trick in faith healing is using wheelchairs. Now, as far as drama is concerned, I'm going to back up the drama. Set up wheelchairs up front. Benny Hinn does this. Set up wheelchairs. It gets the people's mindset already directed. Wear white. Subconsciously, people are thinking, doctor, health. There's all kinds of little trickeries going on here. And as I mentioned, I don't know if, if uh, Benny Hinn knows what he's doing. He just does it because... Catherine Kuhlman wore white so much. And he doesn't always wear white, but he does a lot. And there's a subconscious thing going on with people. When you wear white, they attribute that to health and to doctors. All right, so there's already drama going on. But also the drama, of course, of, of uh, worship and the drama of people testifying and all that kind of stuff. But I want to go back now again. When people don't know what's going on it's far more miraculous and that's how they're going to go because that's where they're already geared toward with all the worship and everything they're already expecting miracles and if you can do stuff they don't get that's miraculous all right back to wheelchairs you bring up a, somebody in a wheelchair a lot of people are not familiar with friends and loved ones who are in wheelchairs, who are quite capable of walking on their own, especially once they've been filled with adrenaline or have a feeling, stuff like that, that a placebo can easily do. So they see a wheelchair up there, and this is, this is stuff that faith healers just capitalize on. It's the easiest trick in the book. 
there was one guy who wrote to me in a comment and said, I'd like to see you get somebody out of a wheelchair. <laughs> All right, this guy does not know squat about people in wheelchairs because it is the easiest thing in the world to get somebody. There are people at home in wheelchairs. There have been times I've been in a wheelchair when I had hip surgery. I was in a wheelchair. <laughs> I was prime target for somebody like Benny Hinn. Go up on stage. If I felt something in my hip, because he's saying it, and, and the word it is, there's something about that with the placebo effect. What a doctor says is important. How he says it, the authority he uses, all that kind of stuff adds to it. That's part of the trickery. And so I'm out there in the audience and somebody says, oh, you, somebody is feeling in their hip a warm sensation. Oh my gosh, I feel a warm sensation. I, it's me. It, or else, or else, well, it's not my hip. He's saying my knee, but, but uh, I want it so bad. Maybe he's talking about me. There's a lot of maybe people up there, believe me. But they, it's, I go up and he prays for me and I feel, I feel like Wow, something has happened. It must be a miracle. Why? Because I don't understand a lot of stuff. The audience all, of course, everything. So I was totally dead in that wheelchair with no ability to move my legs. But now I can walk again. <laughs> you know, that's, that's taking advantage of naivety. And I don't mean naivety in a, in a negative way. But in the fact that people just haven't been trained well enough. They just don't know enough to realize that most people in wheelchairs can walk, especially if you get a good placebo effect going on and the pain disappears temporarily. It is a magician's trick. And it's passing off as miracles because people don't get it. But once you understand the trick, it takes away the miracle. Because it is a trick. It's just like magic. You lead the people to believe one thing when in reality something else completely is taking place. That's what these faith healers are depending upon, whether they know it or not. As I mentioned, I believe many of them are very sincere and really think God is healing, just unaware of all the dynamics going on. Finally, the thing that really the people need to do. And I think if you're a faith healer ministry or any kind of healing ministry, you need and absolutely must do this. Get to know your diseases. Get to know what will respond to placebos, what will not. Get to know that. Get to know what, get to know the difference between a symptom and the disease. And finally, follow up. Check to see if that disappeared in an hour or if it's long lasting. Do all kinds of tests, by the way. And even still, all right, I'm gonna be talking too much, just rattling on. So I'm gonna drop it there and say, may you have a fantastic day and uh, we'll see you guys around. Well, talk to, talk to me in my comments anyway. We'll see you, bye.